Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Lucas Ercana, and uh, basically, this video is just about how to render or how to host or deploy. Let me use the correct term: how to deploy your uh, Rails app um, on a Windows machine. Okay, uh, so please uh, subscribe down there to my channel and uh, just hit the like there and uh, please uh, leave a comment there just to let me know how the video went if there is anything that you need clarification on okay i will post uh, all the links that are required in the bottom of the the bottom of the of the of the, of the description right so first thing is first um make sure that you have ruby uh, the ruby version uh for this video Purpose, the, the Ruby version is 3.22, uh, 3.2.2, so that's the version that I'm using right now. So if it doesn't work on the versions of the older versions, then yeah, just hit me up and let me know if uh, it's not working. And then we can try to see if we can figure it out. All right, so the first thing is that I want to do is to show you that the app works. We have to make sure that the, works, the app works, the migration is uh, happening, and you have a master key. Okay, so if you don't have a master key, okay, so if you don't have a master key, like as you can see right now on my repo, um, if you go in the config file, there should be a file, uh, just minimize that, there should be a file in here master key or end credential credential so if those keys those items are missing uh, the first thing that you need to do is install um, you need to install notepad plus plus this is just for this video it can be any editor that you prefer but for me for this video i'm going to use notepad plus plus and then once you have it installed I already have it installed um, just to demonstrate that it's already there. There you can see that Rupert Plus Plus is installed on my machine. Okay. Then you're going to run this command. Okay. I'm just going to paste it here. I don't have time to type, type it. So there's the command there. Set editor to Notepad Plus Plus, multi inst, and so on. And then the last one there is Rails credentials edit. Okay, and once that runs, then you'll see there's a file that has been created, and you can see it pops up there on your left side. Credentials is there, and master key. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and delete these credentials. We don't need it. Okay, uh, and then the master key is created on your machine. All right, we're gonna need it later, uh, so just keep an eye on it. Okay, so let's find out if this application really works. So I'm gonna pause now and then, um so when so that uh, the installations can take place okay the first thing that i'm going to do is obviously bundle and install okay let me pause return as soon as this is done there it is done okay then we are going to rails db create create our database so this is very very important you need to make sure your database is it can be created and it can be uh, and the, the tables can be migrated to the to the app okay okay there the database has been created okay. then we are now going to migrate db migrate There is a database, it's called tasty, but tasty minus or oh, dash bytes underscore development. Okay, the migration is also going to take a while. Excellent. So, the migration is completed. Next step is to run our app Rails or Rails server entirely up to you. Uh, this is just mostly focused on uh, on uh, deploying this application. So 
I'm not really gonna go into um, most of the commands for real commands. Okay, so there we're gonna click on follow that link just to see if it is working. Um, I have a ton of browsers. I like this browser. So it doesn't matter which browser you use. Just want to see if it is working. Okay, excellent. So it's definitely working. All right, so now if it is working, migration is done, no errors. We're gonna go ahead and stop this and we are going to create a new branch. So uh, check out and we're gonna call this branch um, deploy. Okay, so now it has checked out the deploy. Okay, right. So now we have our key generated. Please remember that key. And we are now going to follow some key steps in order to, com to complete this. And these steps are provided. Okay, I'm just going to minimize or put them in a nice window there. And we're going to look for the documents on render. There we go. Okay, so getting started on render. How did I get here? I just clicked on docs. Okay, let me just go back and show you. So I click on, let me just go back to the dashboard. Okay, when you are on render, you it's very important to note that you have to sign up for an account here. Now, I know you, so most of you are afraid uh, of the payment methods, but they, this is actually a tutorial so that you don't have to pay mostly for students. Okay, now on your dashboard, there is a section docs. Okay, so you click on docs and then select rails because this is a, a rails app. And these are the instructions that we, are, we need to follow. The first thing is we need to make sure that the gems are installed, create the database. Okay, we're skipping all this. Then we move on to the next one, rails control. Okay, skip all that. Uh, skip all that and we go to yes I think we are almost there okay there we go so we are at this stage okay so this stage we are now required to actually um, after we buy because we already bundled installed so what we are going to do now is change the co the, 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 the configuration uh, sorry the database uh, YAML and then um, we are going to change actually the last part this is the last part that we need to change and we need to make it for the production we need to change it to that so we're just gonna go ahead and copy this and then we're gonna go into our config file and go to our database YML okay all right scroll all the way down and just highlight this whole section and paste that for production okay so that's done and then we are going to get um let's say git let's go back here I, I like to use github so i want to keep all these comments so this is now uh, database YML, sorry, YML, um, what do you call it, update, yes, so that's what we did right now, so I'm just going to commit this, I'm going to put this in here, so this is what we are going to place in there, and I'm going to commit this, publish this branch, and wait for it to finish, okay, so it finished, and we pushed everything up to that branch, okay, I'm just going to be posting everything here, so that uh, the links you can actually go to the to the to the to, to, to the links I'm gonna post the links in the description and then you click on the link and then it will directly take you to the to the to the the pull the commit and there there will be a nice description for for that um, okay let me just demonstrate tasty bites Okay, that is my repo. So if I go to the repo there, then I can go to the pull requests. 
Mavix is creating a new pull request. Okay, let me create a new pull request. And then I'm just going to put in here. Goodbye, step. Tutorial on deployment of Rails app. Okay. Look at the way I spell tutorial. And deployment. What's wrong with deployment? Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm just going to erase that and I'm going to copy this, update the amount. And then I'm going to paste it in here, right? So maybe I need to pause this part because, uh, okay, I'm not going to be doing this all the time. So I'm just going to pause every time. Okay. Right. So that is done. So now the user can easily just click on that and the link would be available. And then you'll see, what did I do? So there it says, just copy that and then you paste it in there, put it to the video. All right. That's excellent. Uh, now. Next one. Let me pause quickly. Okay, I'm back to the to the repo to VS Code. Um, now the next step is we need to update or uncomment some highlighted areas that is in your Puma RB file. So I go to my Puma RB file, and there should be some high some highlighted places like that some commented places. So this would be the first one on line 40, and then this one on line 53, and in, change this two to a four. Okay, so it is mentioned here as well. So there, we just keep on following this document. Okay, uh, next step, uh, we need to adjust or add this line of code. So I'm just gonna go all the line, all the way there. Before I do that, let me just commit this. So this is update Puma. I'm just going to commit that. Excellent. Push. Okay, let me pause. Okay, so I just wanted to actually generate a new master key because it was not in the commit. So I'm just going to delete master key there and then run this command again. Um, I just want to put it in the commit so that uh, to generate, if you don't have a key, then you generate one with this command. Then I'll make it available so you can just copy and paste the command. It will be in the description, but it will also be nice if it is on there. Okay, so there we have credentials, and then we just delete these credentials. And we go up here. Can we do this? Can we undo that? Okay, it looks like. Okay, there we go. Puma. Why is it now two? Just to be four. Okay. So we do this. Okay, it's a, the file is already there, so let me just quickly delete it. Gonna paste the command there in the commit. Okay, so there it is. Right, let's keep it there. It's fine. Let's keep it there. And then we say, uh, create master key. So create master key by running this command there. Uh, first install. Notepad plus plus. Okay, there's no harm to install Notepad plus plus. It's actually pretty helpful as well. Uh, okay, there we go. So we push up there. Next step. Okay, let's see what is the next step. Okay, so the next step is copy this this command and then go to 
config environment production. Okay, so we go to environment config environment production. Yes, production. Very good. So we now find config public. Let me pause while I look for it. All right, I found it. Line 25. Okay, so line 25. Okay, so just read that part and see if you can find it. And then when you find it, there it is there. Then you just line 25. But anyway, I'm just telling you now, line 25. Okay, so in here, okay, my thing automatically uh, updates. So uh, find line 25 in the production rd file and replace it with that command. That should be easy enough. Update config. Okay, so let's just say update config slash environment slash production all right commit that you can see the change happening there all right then um, okay there's this command that we need to implement uh, so we have to copy it and this is the code that is actually going to migrate on on render it's going to bundle install on render and then compile and then uh, clean and then migrate. All right. So we're going to run, we're going to copy this and then we're going to create a file inside the bin. So we go inside the bin and inside the bin, we're going to click uh, that there plus for a new file. And then we're going to call this file render dash build. .sh. Okay, make sure you spell it exactly the way it is right there. Then you paste that code in there. Okay, now uh, there's this command that is working on Linux machines. Okay, you just expand a bit here. Now this command is used to test to see if this file we created is executable. Now, if you do this, obviously this is not recognized because this is a Windows machine. So there's another command that I'm going to get. Okay, so I found it. I just copied and pasted it. So this is the command that is for Windows users. This command above here was for Linux users or Unix. And then this one is for Windows users. So if this runs, that means nothing is actually supposed to happen. So basically, if these things don't show up, like it doesn't recognize this, then obviously the application is executing. As you can see, it just ran. Now it, it has been executed, so it can be executed. All right, good. So now that is done, and uh, I made a mistake once. I forgot the H, so then it will not execute. Let me just demonstrate how it looks like without the H. You see the file not found. So you need to make sure that you have it spelled correctly. All right, so let's commit this. Um, what did we say here? This will be done, create. Okay, so this is actually create a script called that. So copy that in the command. Now, I even added there, this is what you must run. I'll put this also in the link there. Create this, da 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 da. All right. Okay, pushing it over there. Okay. Oh, this branch is going to look so amazing. Okay, let's pause. Oh, it's done. Let's go to the next step. Okay, so we know it, dip, it does that. Now we need to create a database. And then we need to fill in all these details in a, uh, in a, in a what? In a, in a file that we are going to create in the root folder. Okay, so we go in the root folder. Okay, 
inside the root folder make sure you are in the root folder we're going to create a file called render.yaml okay now i'm going to paste this code in here but this code is incomplete because the details here these details don't uh, match our system so we need to first create the system right okay wrong tab too many tabs open uh, it must be this one okay there we go so we go to render okay and on render we are going to create a new a new postgres sql because that's what we used in this in this uh, rails app okay we're gonna give it a name uh, my system is called tasty tasty bytes so i'm gonna put tasty bytes right there okay i like to put a dash in between yes okay so I'll just put a dash in between there. That's the name of the database. Then they say they want to give the database, they want to generate a name. Um, let me force, no, let's, let's let them give us a name so that we have a different. Um, yeah. Okay, the username, it will also let, let them generate it. Or maybe we can just divide user. And let me put it in there you can manually put there or just leave it empty right now there's the option here at the bottom don't forget to select free because if you don't then you're going to be required to pay seven dollars a month okay and it's going to ask for your banking details of course or your credit card uh, details right uh okay so i'm going to copy this so long and then i'm going to go create okay so they don't want this in there okay then let me do this uh let's let's just call the database this device without it no man i want to have i want it to have i want it to have the dev dash okay let's do this no it doesn't want okay it's fine then we'll just call it tasty bytes uh and then if this is tasty bytes then this will be tasty byte admin yeah okay it doesn't want special characters okay tasty bites let's just leave it empty in oh. we delete that one three and then we create okay sorry about that but anyway i just had to show you what would happen if you try to do funny things <laughs> and uh, how you must react when that happens okay uh, you cannot have more than one active free database Ooh, oh there's the problem now the file the free expire on in 90 days okay let me pause quickly okay unfortunately um since i already have another database i had to actually pay for this one <laughs> it's fine don't worry about it um so i could not submit because apparently i have a I already have another database so i have another one database for this uh, capstone project so i can't have two of them at the same time you see so i have to pay for this one uh okay i didn't get charged yet so maybe it's gonna, it's gonna charge me end of the month okay anyway so let's move on so um perhaps you can use other platforms uh just see if i can make another video for uh, doing it on on Vercel. and i'll see if i can get it right excellent okay so here we are so the username okay so the database name is the same as yes is the same as the name of the database okay so that is first thing that we need to copy and put it in here so put it in here database name okay and then it's also the same as the database name okay sorry I'm, I'm sounding very redundant using the same word over and then I'm just gonna put it at name there as well so at that position and the next one is the user so we need the user there 
gonna put it in here uh, username 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 where are you there username okay I'm gonna paste it in there okay yes. all right so once we've done that I'm gonna keep this tab open because we're gonna need this internal URL okay according to the instructions okay if you have uh, there's the part where we have to now get the master key and all these things but we already created the master key so we need to get them and put them in the in the website so now we go back to we just open another tab and go in there and we click new and you create click on web service okay inside web service we are going to connect we are going to connect to the to the repo that you want if it's if it's another one that it's fine okay mine is a tasty bites okay so we're gonna give it a name tasty. okay this I think this one allows me to put a dash tasty bites yes I want it to have that all right okay so tasty bites and then which branch we are looking at the development deploy branch okay not the development the deploy okay very very important okay then we have um, we skip we skip the directory we keep it empty and then we look for the command okay we need to place a command so build command needs to store a special command where do we get this command okay so I'm just gonna put it in here okay and then where do we get this command we go back to the document and there should be a command there so build command there copy that and we paste it in here and we also paste it in there this is just for your purposes okay so delete that and paste it in there again don't forget the H now nah? make sure the H is the last character then the next one is what is the start command so the start command um, should be here so basically this is what when creating a site okay is it website a web service okay sorry web service web service okay command is uh, yes here's the command bundle exec Okay, this one is the one that will actually run the Puma file that we were changing earlier. So we put it right there. Okay, paste it in here. And okay, let's hope that the free works. I think the free will work for this one. Yeah. Okay, but we're not done. Okay, so now we have that and we want this name and we're going to put it right here in the yaml in the y um render yaml file here where it says my site so you're just gonna paste that in there and i think this is complete um then we go to create oh don't click don't click create yet we need to go to advance and then we want to add uh variables inside here we're gonna put um We're gonna put the master key so we need the master key so we need the master rails master key so this is now copy that and i'm just gonna paste it in here uh, master key and the master key is uh we generated it earlier so we just go to the config file and look for the master key that okay and then oops, sorry for my job application there so master key there I forgot okay variable and we add this is now something that you don't get but anyway let's let's first finish this one so we get the URL 
Okay. Okay, database URL. And then paste it in here. And where do we get the database URL? We go back to the database and we find this URL I was talking about earlier. I'll just copy it there and I'll paste it in here. Okay. Now, it's another one that we need to add. This is now the secret key. Okay. It's not mentioned in any of the other videos, but it just makes it more accessible and make sure that your service is uh, going to be or your build is going to take place. Okay. So now this is the secret key. So you just type secret key, also put it in here in the commit, in the comments, in the description, like I said. Now, how do we get this secret key? So we go in here and we run a command called Rails Secret. Yeah. I'm going to pause so that you don't see my secret. Okay. It ran. I deleted it so that you didn't see it. I copied it. So now I just go in here and then I paste it in here. And I scroll all the way down so that you don't get to see my key, my secret key, and connect to my database. All right, so I click create and it's gonna run. And, um, oh, I forgot to push. Uh, I forgot to push. Okay, so create render to the secret. Uh, it's, I think it's gonna fail because we didn't push. Okay, let's find out. Anyway, we still need to do something extra. Okay, as you can see, it has failed. Your Ruby version 3.2, your gem file specifies 3.222. Okay, so now uh, we're going to update our version uh, and then uh, we'll fix this problem. Okay, um, I think the problem was with this gem, gem log file. So let me just delete this and bundle install again. I don't know why. My version is 3.2.2, but it's picking up. I remember it was. Why is it picking up 2.2.1? Okay, let's find out. Okay, so that's done. Oh, let me also delete this credential file. Okay, and then we push it up. Uh, delete, then lock. Then bundle install. I forgot to write the delete credential file. <laughs> but it should fail again, but it should show a different mistake. So I go back to render and then, oh, it automatically redeploys. Excellent. So let's see what's happening. It's always nice to have a look at what, what's happening at that moment. Again, it will fail. Okay. see how I fix that. Remember I fixed this. I don't know how I fixed it. Let me just okay. I think what happened is I updated when I created this I was on 2.1 then I updated as you can see I'm on the Ruby version 3.22 so yeah, I guess that I don't know what I can't explain it but anyway I just all I did was just uh, change this to a one, remove the gem, gem lock file, delete it, and then reinstall it. And now I'm going to uh, update it or commit it. So I'm just saying create gem lock again. So now it should work. Actually, there's one more command that we need to run. Okay, there we go. Fingers crossed. 
3.21 okay I see now render source could be version okay yeah there's the command I'm looking for okay so there's this command here um, I'm not gonna go into it I'm just gonna copy it and then I'm gonna put it right there yeah so we need to run this command uh, it's just it's coming from the from the deployment so you run it there okay okay it's installing the dependencies right into the gemlock file there we go all right so update gemlock file so what are we gonna do here we're gonna run this command in the terminal yeah, copy that. We could officially just run it, but I, but I wanted to show you what happens if that happens, what you can do if that happens. So, yeah, let's go there. New deployment. Ah, this has to be successful. Building, there we go, there we go, excellent. Installing all the bundles. Okay, I think it's migrating, creating the tables, uploading the build. Come on. There we go, build successful. As soon as, as soon as you see this, you're ready to go. So now if you click on the link down here, up here. I want to click on it. And... Hmm, I don't know if I can customize this. Can I not customize this? Uh, link it doesn't look so nice for me. Maybe the manual. Okay. Anyway, it's loading. Ah, there we go. So the website is now up and running. So yes. So it's uh it's done. We have done it. We've accomplished it. All right. Please hit a like there subscribe on my channel to my channel for more videos um, and please put a comment and request for further videos I'll be glad to make them if I see that there are people who actually need uh, help with this all right thank you so much for watching um, please also have a look at my github profile and uh, go to my repo and uh, click on the link so that you can actually um, have a look at my portfolio and um, you can have a look at my portfolio and all my projects that I have accomplished and just hit a star if you really like what I've done uh, thank you so much have a good one happy coding